excited to have a conversation with ALA author Charles Wheeler about his recent publications. Charles Wheeler is an attorney with Catholic Legal Immigration Network Clinic in Oakland, California, and directs its training and legal support section. He's been specializing in immigration and aliens rights issues for 40 years. And in addition to being the editor of Immigration Law and the Family, Mr. Wheeler is the author of three additional books for ALA, Public Charge and Affidavits of Support, A Practitioner's Guide, Provisional Waivers, A Practitioner's Guide, and ALA's Focus on the Child Status Protection Act, all of which are available on ALA Agora and on ALA Link. Charles, thanks for taking time out of your day to speak with us about your publications. You've had a, uh, a very prolific year updating all four of your books within a nine month period. So I thought we could discuss the latest of those publications. Let's start with Immigration Law and the Family. Who would benefit from this book and what can readers expect in terms of scope and format? Well, I think any practitioner who represents clients in family-based immigration would benefit from this book. Uh, it tries to focus on the most common issues that uh, petitioners and applicants are going to face in this whole process. Uh, it provides really a step-by-step -step guide starting right from the beginning in terms of who's eligible to immigrate. Uh, it then goes on to talk about the forms, documents that they're going to need, how to obtain those documents, how to complete the forms, gives a lot of sample cover letters, uh, sample motions, and it really also focuses on determining pitfalls. In other words, it talks a lot about potential grounds of inadmissibility, potential problems, uh, and really sort of prepares people not only for those issues, but also for preparing for interviews, both at the consulate and the uh, USCIS adjustment of status. So really sort of goes A to B from every stage of the process. I would say that goes A to Z, Charles. It's one of our more popular books. And, uh, you know, it's where we've just released the sixth edition. And I know the book has changed significantly since its very first edition. So what's changed? Um, what have you added? Um, what have readers been asking for, perhaps, um, that you've taken to heart when updating it this, this last round? Well, eligibility to adjust status is still one of the more complicated areas and still evolving. So we try to stay on that as close as we can. Um, the grounds of inadmissibility also are changing, particularly in the areas of adjustment of, uh, in terms of uh, misrepresentation, fraud, false claims of citizenship, uh, smuggling, still getting decisions on unlawful presence. So all of those are one of the focuses we also do. I think as a result, the book has gotten longer over time. It's gotten more detailed, uh, and it really tries to focus us on those areas that are probably the most common uh, that practitioners are facing. So I'd like to think that it's gotten better. I think it has gotten better, uh, and it was a wonderful book to begin with. So um, thanks for kind of going into a bit of detail there. And um, readers sometimes ask, uh, what need does this book fill, for example, that other books on its topic don't fill? Why should I get this particular book? And how would you answer them? Well, the sixth edition really focuses on those most recent changes in immigration law. So, for example, the affidavit of support, the public charge has gotten a complete makeover. Um, but also, this administration, as everyone knows, is focusing on extreme vetting, both at the adjustment of status, but also at the consular processing stage. You're getting a lot more people who are rejected, who are denied, who are getting requests for more evidence. So we try to focus on those documents that are required to be submitted, how to obtain those documents, making sure that when you do submit an application or you appear at your interview, uh, things are gonna go as smoothly as possible. So that's how I would say we've addressed it, tried to come up with ways to uh, meet the new requirements by this administration. And I guess the last question about the immigration law and the family, is there anything else that readers can expect as a takeaway? Anything else you want to add about uh, all of the work that you put into this latest edition? 
I guess I would say that family-based immigration has gotten a lot more complicated over time. Uh, and it also involves more risks. If your client is denied at the adjustment stage, then he or she is more likely now to get a notice to appear and be put in removal proceedings. Uh, if they're consular processing, obviously they may be stranded abroad. So it's much more important that you prepare the client for all of these potential pitfalls uh, and explain the risks. And that's really where I think this book comes into play. Uh, it's practical, it's economical, uh, it tries to summarize the law. It's not really an in-depth in uh, desk treatise. It's really uh, a quick reference guide uh, the focus on the most common questions and provide that kind of answers that people might are really looking for quickly. And based upon our feedback so far, Charles, it sounds like that's exactly what readers are getting. Let's move now to your latest edition of Public Charge and Affidavits of Support, A Practitioner's Guide. That book has changed a lot since its original edition in 2017, and indeed even the name has changed. So what can you tell us about those changes, Charles, uh, and about the book in general? Well, I think probably the biggest change in immigration law in the last year, if not the last couple of years, has been this new public charge requirement. Uh, both the Department of Homeland Security and Department of State uh, revised their public charge uh, standard in an important way, really, I think, to try to make it more difficult for low-income people uh, to immigrate but it really affects everyone, everyone applying for adjustment or an immigrant visa. So what we've tried to do is address those specific new changes. We've added four new chapters. Uh, each one takes apart the requirements and the new public charge rule from both the USCIS and Department of State perspective, uh, talks through the new forms, explains really with practical advice on how to complete them, what documents to submit, uh, and really, I think, helps the practitioner uh, figure out what to expect at this next stage. And in terms of the practitioner, Charles, who would benefit from this book? Well, I think any and really every practitioner who is now filing adjustment of status or consular processing and family-based, as well as even employment-based, uh, would benefit from this. What we do is we focus on practical advice, sample cover letters, uh, what documents to include, how to obtain those documents. Uh, we analyze both the positive and the negative factors that the agency is going to be considering. Uh, and we try to figure out, based on the agency's interpretation, how to prepare for those interviews and how to help your client through this whole system. It's a daunting task, but I think you covered it well in the book. And again, the reader feedback has been just phenomenal. So thank you for all of your work on, on putting that book together so quickly. If you could give readers just one piece of advice um, about the new public charge rules, what would it be? I guess at this stage, it would be don't give up. This is still a work in progress. We're still waiting for information as to how the agencies are going to be interpreting this and applying these new standards. Uh, and I would say that it is a balancing of positive and negative factors. So don't get discouraged when you have a client who is currently unemployed, uh, may have a health related problem, maybe, maybe retired. Uh, you've got a lot of US citizens who are petitioning for their parents abroad. Um, look at the whole gestalt, look at all the positive factors as well and try to weigh those. This is really your opportunity to be an advocate and try to explain why this person is unlikely to become a public charge. Uh, we have information, links to other documents that we've prepared uh, that would help you through this process and share information as you're getting uh, feedback. Uh, please share that with all of us so that we can gain and learn collectively from this. Well, I think that that is a very bright note um, that we can end on. But before we do end, uh, Charles, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about your publications um, or any of the, the work that you're currently doing? Um, no, we're constantly trying to improve them, edit them, and, and uh, make them more readable. Uh, but again, the focus is on step-by-step -step guiding you through this process rather than uh, in-depth legal treatise. So uh, again, trying to be economical as well as practical. Thank you so much for your time today and uh, for your generosity and sharing your knowledge and your guidance 
um, with all of your readers and beyond. Ayla is very grateful to you and we thank you.